Let's agree by saying praise the Lord again. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Johnson Johnson congregation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 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 We thank God this morning for His goodness, His mercy, His love. Amen. Thank God for another time so we can uh, yes. share the word of God. Yes. Amen. 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 We thank God. Amen. Just love that know where we are in Jesus' name. Amen. You are listening to the services coming from the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. We are located at 612 Jefferson Avenue, Pottstown, PA, 19464. Our phone number is 610-326-2460. You can also visit our website on www.heeverliveth.org. www.heeverliveth.org. We now present the speaker, Elder Johnson. Hear ye him. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Thank God for his goodness. Amen. Thank God this day for keeping us yet another yes. time. Amen. When we can come together as we are now. Yes. Amen. To call on his name. Amen. 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 Go with me to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. There, my brother. Otherwise, we'll get them out for us as well. Amen. We'll start there. Amen. We are ready. Then Peter said unto them, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. That's for the removal of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Not that you might receive it, as some may say that you don't need it, but that you shall receive it. Amen. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, yes, and to all that are far off, yes, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, and with many other words yes. that he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Yes. Amen. We don't know what the other words were, but we know he spoke other words. Amen. Amen. And so we are thankful to God for those words from Peter that men ought to repent in these last yes. days. Amen. That they ought to give up this world. Amen. And uh, the sin in it. Amen. Ought to turn their lives toward the Lord yes. and begin to live a right before God. Amen. Thank God. Amen. We thank God for those words. Otherwise, you read Mark for me, my brother. Mark, Mark yes. 16 and 14. Yes, sir. And after he appeared unto the eleven, yes. and they said at me, and upbraided themselves. Yes. With, with unbelief and hardened of heart. Yes. Because they believed not them which had seen him after yes. the Lord risen. Yes. Amen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. He that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. We didn't write it, God did. Amen. Amen. We just required, as the scripture says, uh, uh, preach the word. He told that to the apostles. That's right, sir. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, reprove, yes. rebuke, exhort with all love, yes. suffering. That's, right. That's all we're required to do. It's, yes, amen. God spoke those words. Yes. Amen. God spoke those words. We just repeat them. That's right. Amen. We uh, recognize that we're in the last days when amen. men won't mend their ways. Amen. amen. They are calling wrong right and calling yes. right wrong. Yes. Amen. Amen. Bleed the church of all they can get from it. Yes. Amen. Uh, burn the people. Yes. Amen. With financial requirements. And not recognizing that all of what you build down here is going to come to naught. Amen. Amen. The only thing that you can take with you when you die is your salvation. Yes. Can't take a thing else. Amen. All the bricks and the mortar, the buildings, everything we create down here is left behind Amen. when we pass from this world. 
only thing that you can take with you when you die is your salvation. Amen. And so when we begin these services and we go to Acts chapter 2, and verse 38, repent. It's the best place to begin. Amen. If they're not preaching it to you often enough, something is wrong. Amen. Amen. Because the church ought to repent. Yes. Amen. The world ought to repent, but they won't do it. Amen. But the church ought to do it. Amen. Amen. Repent and be baptized. Yes. Every one of you, not some. That's right. Amen. Not just a few. That's right. Amen. But repent and be baptized every one of you yes. in the name. It tells you how to go about it. Yes. Amen. Some men say, well, we don't know how to be saved. Yes, you do. Amen. John said that you may know. Amen. Not that you might guess yes. or that you might be thinking, am I saved or not? I heard a man say recently, he does not remember the day he got saved. Well, maybe he's not saved. I remember the day I got saved. I don't remember the exact day, but I remember what took place that day. Amen. I knew that day when I crossed over. Amen. We're standing here today preaching the word as the scripture requires us to do. Amen. Amen. And as it says we should do to today is what we're doing. Yes. Repent and be baptized. Right. Repentance is when you recognize that you have lived a sinful life before God. Yes. Amen. Repent and be baptized yes. in water. Fully immersed in water. Yes. Amen. Going down in that water. Amen. Not in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, but in the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Being buried with him in baptism. Yes. Amen. When you're baptized in him, in him you're buried with him. Amen. Another scripture says, Know ye not that you that are baptized into his name are baptized into his death amen. and his resurrection. Yes. And so today, amen, we go back to the beginning. Amen. The scripture says, and Remove not the old landmarks. That's an old landmark. Amen. Repentance. Amen. amen. It's a landmark. It's how the church was formed. Amen. You can't have church without it. Amen. You're wasting your time. You don't have it. Amen. That's why when you see preachers get up and preach an entire message and they don't tell you to repent of all your sins. They don't tell you to bring something right before God. Amen. You know something's wrong with that church. Amen. Amen. It ought to be your starting point. Yes. Repentance. That's right. Amen. You ought to begin there. Nowhere else. Wasting your time. You can't have a church without a repentance. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture says repent and be baptized. You've got to get baptized the right way. Amen. Not some way, not any way, but the right way. Amen. Amen. You've got to start the right way. Come on, brother. That's the beginning. You've got to start the right way. Then you can pick up and go. It's going to say you ought to run this race lawfully. People want to do this anyhow. Want to put water on people's heads. You're wasting your time. Amen. Man dies, you don't take him out there and sprinkle dirt over him. You take him out there, you bury him. Amen. Feet, head, hands, everything goes under the dirt. Yes. And that's what you do when you bury a man in baptism in water. Right. Amen. You fully immerse him in that water. Right. Amen. amen. And so you can't have church without, amen, Acts 2.38. Amen. Say, well, if that's all you preach, good. That's where we'll begin <laughs> and that's where we'll end. Right. Amen. We may touch a few other things as we go. Amen. But you've got to start there. Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Not some. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ tells you how to do it in that name. Some might say, well, why in the name of Jesus Christ? And doesn't that contradict Matthew 28 and 19? No, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, Matthew 28 and 19 is fulfilled oh, in Acts 2.38. Amen. Amen. Whenever you do Acts 2.38, you fulfill yes. Matthew 28 and 19. Amen. Go ye into all the world, baptizing the name of the Father. Yes. The name of the Father is Jesus. And in the name of the Son. The name of the Son yes. is Jesus. Yes. And in the name of the Holy Ghost. The name of the Holy Ghost is Jesus. Okay. Amen. Yes. You fulfill Matthew 28 and 19 right. when you go through Acts 2 38. Right. And when you do exactly what Peter tells you to do, then you'll fulfill the scriptures. Right. Amen. You started out the right way. Right. Many of you out there, you, you, you don't understand why you can't get away from the world. Right. Don't understand why the church fills up the world. Amen. And, why, and why the world fills up the church. Peter, Amen. No. Come on, brother. Peter understood the whole way. Amen. It was given to him. God understands too. Amen. If you know, hey, come on, brother. Come on, brother. They know they understand. That's why they don't understand it. That's why they don't even believe it. 
They'll challenge you if you tell you you're going to go to Acts 2.38. They'll tell you not so. You don't have to go through that scripture. Brother, you don't have to preach it every time. Yes, you do. Yes. Amen. Amen. There are people out there who want to know how to get to heaven every day. They want to know how to make right with God every day. They want to know how to get away from sin every day. Amen. Only way they're going to do it is through that door. Jesus Christ. Amen. When Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. No man cometh unto the Father Amen. but by me. Amen. You can't get to the Father without going through Christ. Amen. That's why Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The scripture tells you. There is no other name given under heaven whereby a man can be saved. Right. It's simple, you know. You know, you don't have to complicate this way. Amen. Amen. You don't have to make it seem so complex that a man cannot find it. Amen. Some people want to give you deep mysteries. They want to tell you, oh, well, here's a mystery that I have discovered. Amen. The scripture said that no scripture is of any private interpretation. Amen. Meaning God didn't give it to you and not to anybody else. He gave it to everybody. That's why it said, so God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, yes. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All men have been given this way of salvation, but not all men will take it. Amen. Not all men want it. Not all men will take up the cross. Yes. We sing that song, take up the cross and follow me. I hear the blessed Savior call. How can I make a lesser sacrifice when Jesus gave his all? Not all men want this. Not all men want to come this way. Not all men want to live. Some men are, are destined to die. They are perditious. They are destined to die. They want to live in this world. And they want to live in sin. Many, Many brother. They don't want to come this way. Why do you think most men reject the way of salvation? When was the last time your preacher preached on Acts 2.38? When was the last time he told you, listen, some men preach it the first time, you get baptized. And they don't preach it again. The church ought to always be at the place of repentance. Amen. The scripture Amen. said that afterward they were made it no more sacrifice. Amen. They were made it no more sacrifice. All that's left, what? Is repentance. Yes. Have to come and repent before the Lord. Amen. You're no good to God if you are not in a repentant state. You're no good to God if you have not repented of all your sins. You're no good to God if you have not repented of living this life the way other men live. You're no good to God. You have to give up this life. Why do you think Jesus Christ said, if any man comes after me, let him first lay down his life, take up his cross, and follow me. You have to first lay down this life. Let go of sin. Let go of the ways of the world. Yes. Stop dressing like them. Amen. Stop talking like them. Amen. Stop walking like them. Yes. You have to give up the world and follow Jesus. Amen. We sing the song, I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. No turning back. No turning back. No looking back at the world or at sin. But recognizing that we're on a narrow pathway. Amen. Straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leadeth to life eternal. Yes. And only a few will find it. Amen. We're living in the last days. Amen. We're living in the last hour. Amen. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, my brother. Matthew chapter 7. Yes, Matthew chapter 7. Start reading from verse 1. Judge not. Judge not. That ye be not judged. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Many of us like to get on that high horse. Amen. We like to get up there. Sometimes even in the rostrum. And judge men. Amen. We are. For with what judgment ye judge, yes. ye shall be judged. Amen. Whatever you give out, that's what you're going to get back. Amen. The way you measure another man, that's how you're going to be measured before God. Amen. It's going to say that he, that is spiritual, judges all things. Amen. But it said all things, not all men. That's the work of the scriptures, to judge a man's life. Read on for me. 
And with what measure ye meant, yes. it shall be measured to you again. Amen. What you give out, what you get back. Read on, brother. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye? That's right. You can see what's in someone else's life, but you cannot see what's in yours. Amen. That's why when you come this way, this is a self-examination way. Amen. You have to examine yourself. That's why when you get to Acts 2, 38, and you begin to understand what is required for a man to be saved. The scripture said, you know, examine yourselves. You have to examine your life. You have to take a close look at how you're living before God. Many people will not understand why they go to hell. Many people are going to get there but they won't understand why. Many people are going to go to hell, but they won't understand how they ended up down there. Huh? Examine yourselves, whether you are in the faith. Amen. Have to examine yourself Amen. to know whether you're living right, whether you're living according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, here's a fact for you. If I take the word of God and change it. Yes. How do you know whether you're living right or not? You've got to take it the way you find it. Amen. Amen. You can't come along and begin to tell the people that it's corrupt, that something's wrong with it, that man had his way with it. Come on now. That makes God a liar. Amen. That makes God a liar. Yeah, right. Every time, listen, come on, brother. He who cannot lie, it makes God a liar. But the scripture says, let God be true, and every man a liar. Now, you can't take the word of God and change it. When you change it, you try and justify it and tell the people, you know what? Man had his way with the scriptures. Man, somehow, six days, the Catholics had their way with the word of God. They corrupted the word of God. Listen to me now. That makes God a liar. Come on, my Lord, my Savior, my God, my King. Didn't God say, didn't Christ say, before one jot, one tittle of this word passes away, heaven and earth shall pass away. You can't change it. We sing that song. You can't change it. No, you can't change it. No, you can't change it. It's the word of God. Nobody can change it. Nobody can change it. Nobody can change it. It's the word of God. You can't change this. Huh? For those of you out there that have lifted yourselves up and highly esteemed yourselves and taken the word of God and added to it, taken from it. I heard a man say, well, the Catholics had it for six days. When they did, they corrupted it. I say not so. God preserved his word. Amen. And if God had not preserved his word, not one of us would be saved. Amen. If God had not preserved his word, not one of us would be saved. Because we've been using a corrupt book. We've been using a corrupt set of scriptures. And the scriptures are not corrupt, my friend. You might be corrupted. Your message might be corrupted. Your doctrine might be corrupted. But the word of God is pure and holy and altogether righteous. When you get the Holy Ghost, you'll say the same thing as I just did. When you get the Holy Ghost, you will declare that the Word of God is holy and righteous and altogether lovely. Come on. When you get the Holy Ghost, it will lead you into all truth. And the first truth that you come across is that the word of God is pure and holy 
and righteous and altogether good. Yes. That's one of the first truths. When the Spirit says, and the Spirit, when you get the Holy Ghost, then the Comforter is come, and He will lead you into all truth. One of the first truths that you will get is that the Word of God is not corrupted. Amen. No man didn't get to this. Might look sometimes like he did. Might sound sometimes like he did. I've seen them add to the word. Take from the word. And then preach a message. And all they preach is lies. Amen. When you're done, if you don't have the spirit of God, you cannot tell that they just preach lies. Amen. I've seen them add to the word. I've seen them take from the word. Yes. And when they're finished, all they preach over the rostrum is lies. We come with the word. It's a line upon line. Yes. Precept upon precept. Here a little and there a little. Why do you think the scripture says here a little and there a little? Why? God hid the word in the word. Yes. Amen. God hid the word in the word. That's why you see many of them, they, they cannot reconcile the scriptures. And because they cannot reconcile the word of God, they begin to say the scriptures contradict themselves. And when they're not telling you that the scriptures contradict themselves, they will tell you that somehow that word there is corrupted. And oh, they'll say that's a three God doctrine. You know, they'll tell you something about why that doesn't match up with something else and why this doesn't match up with something else. Why? They don't understand the word of God. It has not been given to them. Listen to me. With all the knowledge they appear to have, they do not have the truth. Come on, my brother. So they have a zeal. That's how they study the word. They have a zeal. But it's not according to knowledge. It's not according to the deep knowledge of God and who God is. And that's why when they come at the word, they don't know what to do with it. So they begin to say, well, somehow the Catholics must have corrupted that scripture. And they must have corrupted this scripture. No, they did not. Come on. Everybody out there has their own Bible. They've translated their own scriptures. If you seek me. Search for me. Look for me. Yes. With your whole heart, yes. you will find me. Amen. Who do you believe? That man out there? Or do you believe God? If God said, if you search for me, if you look for me, if you, if you seek for me, yes. if he says you will find me, who do you believe that lie out there that tells you that the word of God is corrupted? How can the word of God be corrupt? Nothing wrong with it. But there's something wrong with that man that's telling you that the word of God is corrupt. And listen to me. By the time he's done with you, you'll be just as corrupt as what he's telling you. Come on. Go with me to Acts, to, uh, uh, Second Thessalonians, brother. Second Thessalonians, two. The verse thirteen. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you. Yes. Brethren, yes. beloved of the Lord. Yes. Because God hath, hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit. Yes. And belief of the truth. Uh, and belief of what? And belief of the truth. And belief of what? 
the truth. Amen. That's what the scripture says. When the spirit, of, listen, when it comes, it's come. He will lead you into all truth. But it's not just being led to the truth. It's whether or not you believe the truth. Read that for me again, my brother. But we are bound to give thanks always to yes. God. Yes. Yes. Brethren, beloved of the Lord, yes. because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And belief of the truth. <coughs> you have to believe this to receive this. Amen. See, many men have rejected it. They have rejected the truth. Why? Because they don't understand it. Some of them have come across it. Why do you think the scripture said they were learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth? Imagine you've got the word of God, you've read it, you've studied it, but you still don't understand it. Why? It's not given to you. It's not given to you. And because it's not given to you, you can't find it. You don't know what to do with it. Amen? Amen. You don't know what to do with it. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians now, 2 and verse 13. For this cause for this, also. For this cause also. Thank we God. Thank we God. Without ceasing. Without ceasing, that means without stopping. We read on. Because when you receive the word of God. When you receive. The word of God. That means you received it. That means you heard it. That means somebody preached it to you. That means somebody read it to you. But you heard it and you received it. Read on, brother. When you received the word of God. When you received the word of God. Which you heard of us. Yes, which we preached unto you. Yes. You received it not as the word of man. That means you did not conclude that man gave it to you. Now, listen to me, saints of God. You've got to get this. You've got to get this right. Any day that you believe that the word of God was written by man, you are doomed to die and go to hell. Any day that you believe that the word of God was written by man, was given by man, was changed by man, was corrupted by man. Amen. You're finished. You're done. You have no hope of salvation. If the scripture says, search the scriptures, that means search them. That, means, that doesn't mean read it like a book. It said search the scriptures. Yes. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Yes. But you are required to search the word of God. You are required to try that spirit of what sort it is. Whether it's a liar, or whether it's a true spirit. You are required to do so. Now when you see people out there telling you the word of God is corrupt, you can understand what they're telling you. They're telling you how to die. They're telling you how to die. Because the word of God, listen, you... He said, he that comes unto God must first believe that God is. You have to first believe the word of God. If you don't believe it, then you've got nothing to go by. You have nothing to judge other men by. That's why, you see, Satan is in the church today and people don't know who he is. Amen. Because he has changed the definition of the scriptures. So when men are searching for him in the church, they can't find him. They can't find him in the world, in the church. Why? He has changed himself. Even those people you see coming and reading the word and preaching it uh, without understanding it. And giving you some other impression of what is right and what is wrong. 
the scripture says holiness without which no man shall see the lord now